Hi, welcome to the Reclaimy channel. We have been working on a drawback recovery recently and depending on when you are watching this video, the drawback capability is either already released for Reclaimy Pro or is just about to be released. As you probably know, Drobo is fairly complicated. So that got us thinking what exactly determines our ability to recover a complex storage system or, in other words, how complex the storage can get while still being recoverable. The complexity of a storage system is determined by a set of rules and parameters required to describe the system. Let's illustrate. Data location on a simple partition can be described using only two parameters, the beginning of the partition and its size. This is the simplest case. RAID 0 requires one rule. Data is cut into the blocks of the same size, which are then written to the member disks one by one. The rule employs two parameters, disk order and block size. RAID 5 obeys the following rule. First, data is cut into the blocks of the same size, then the blocks are written to the member disks one by one. Additionally, one more block containing parity calculated over some part of the data is written to the disks according to a particular pattern. The rule adds more parameters like how parity is calculated, disk order, block size and period between parity blocks. Note that exactly the same description defines RAID 4 and RAID 3. A fundamentally important property of these descriptions is that the number of variables and the complexity of the description do not depend on the size of a single disk. To detect the parameters, it is needed to analyze some part of the data. When analyzing, a human needs less amount of data as compared to the recovery software. That is, he or she can draw the correct conclusions using a small amount of data. Obviously, if there is no data at all, it is impossible to detect any parameters. In the extreme case, when you deal with a blank array, you cannot even distinguish RAID 0 from RAID 5. Now let's talk about the minimum amount of data required to detect the parameters. In case of manual detection, you need several files larger than the block size and the total size larger than two or three full stripes. This corresponds to about 100 KB of data per parameter. For example, in case of a 3-disk rate 0, you need four parameters, block size and three disk locations in the disk order. Generally, for such an array, a human needs to analyze about 500 KB of data. This includes both useful data and useless data, adding nothing to the information about the storage. Software has less ability to separate useful data from useless data and so requires at least by four orders of magnitude more data. That's why the same root zero with four parameters requires 4-5 GB data to analyze 1 GB per parameter before automatic analysis can detect the parameters. The size of data for analysis is approximately the same no matter what parameter you try to detect. It likely depends on data characteristics like entropy, autocorrelation, Markov distances and the like. What can be said for sure is that the amount of data needed for analysis cannot be readily reduced to 100 times. Generally, the amount of data which should be analyzed depends on data entropy both in automatic and manual analysis. The more entropy, the more data is required. A special case of this is encrypted data having the maximum possible entropy. Encrypted data requires at least 1000 times more data to be scanned. Heavily encrypted data cannot be recovered at all regardless of whether you have the encryption keys or not. An encryption system is designed to prevent access to the data if something goes wrong, for example, if its metadata is damaged or somebody tries to get access to the data without a key. If encryption system metadata is damaged, the system, say, cannot distinguish what data is encrypted and what not, and naturally, it does not provide access to the data at all. There are various cases where data recovery is possible due to the encryption system defects. However, there is no general data recovery solution. 
So in automatic recovery the minimum amount of data to scan is about 1 GB per parameter. More complex schemes of storing data like Microsoft Storage Spaces and Drobo Beyond RAID use the detailed maps to determine data location on member disks. Let's look at the storage spaces first. In the simplest case, you can think of storage spaces as a board consisting of 256 MB elements called slabs. There is a map storing pointers to the slabs. If you have only one disk in storage spaces pool to describe one terabyte of data, in the worst case, you need 4000 parameters describing the location of each element on the disk. In real life, slabs are grouped into series. Nevertheless, the number of parameters to be determined is still measured in hundreds per terabyte. As for the automatic recovery, software has no problem to scan a lot of data. As I said, we need about 1 GB per parameter. With storage spaces, theoretically there is only 256 MB per parameter because one slab contains 256 MB of data and adds one parameter. Thus, storage spaces recovery in case of lost map of slabs is difficult. Our reclaiming storage spaces recovery can do that, but it requires to analyze all the data from all the disks, which takes several days, and in the end uh, the success rate uh, is about 60%. Even more complex example is Drobo Beyond Rate, where a map of 4 kilobyte blocks is used. That's why with Drobo you have one parameter per 4 kilobyte of data. In case of complete loss of maps, automatic drop or recovery with acceptable quality is impossible because too many parameters should be detected having too small amount of data. What is worse is that the number of parameters increases proportionally to the amount of data. The growing number of parameters very quickly makes it impossible to recover them manually because the task is too big. Now let's illustrate all the discussed and depict how the number of parameters depends on the volume size. The first assumption is that a human can detect up to 50 parameters. Also, we found that in case of automatic recovery, it is required to analyze at least 1 GB data per parameter. So we get the manual and automatic recovery limits. The green area corresponds to the cases when recovery is possible in manual mode, while the red area covers the cases when only automatic recovery is possible. Please note that automatic recovery implies the detection of the parameters by analyzing data rather than just reading system metadata. Anything above the automatic recovery limit corresponds to the cases when recovery is impossible without metadata. Now let's look at different storage systems. Start with standard rates. Since such systems can be described by up to 10 parameters, this is definitely the manual recovery area. Then goes storage spaces, which, having 4 parameters per gigabyte, barely fits into the automatic recovery area. Drobo, which operates with 4 kilobyte chunks, cannot be recovered at all without metadata. And finally, let's look at BTRFS, which is used in modern Netgear NASIS. With small volumes, you can try to detect the parameters manually. With real volume sizes, the only option left is automatic recovery. In addition to the large number of parameters which should be detected to assemble a modern storage system back, there are a lot of subtleties like background processes involved in a particular storage system. Generally, such processes make a recovery impossible or at least severely impair the quality of the recovery. Especially, this is true for the systems utilizing the thin provisioning feature. We all know about Trim and SSD. Trim is a hardware analog of process taking place in storage spaces or drawable systems. The storage spaces driver, when an entire 256 MB slab becomes free, for example, as a result of file deletion, discards it, 
from all the maps and if SSD drives are involved, sends a trim command to the underlying hardware. Once slabs are discarded from the maps, you still can try our Reclaim Storage Spaces Recovery in Deep Scan mode and if you are lucky, you get 60% of data back in about a week. If SSD drives are involved, data recovery is impossible. Thin provisioning used in Drobo is not activated immediately after the deletion, but instead works as a background process when the system is idle. Drobo scans the volume on it and decides which parts of it are free. It then releases its 4 kilobyte blocks and erases the allocations from the block map. Once the process is done, nothing can be recovered since the entries about the released 4 kilobyte blocks are lost and there is no way to get these blocks back. They are too small. Thank you for watching and good luck with your recoveries. Reclaim Me Team was with you. See you soon!